Hey everybody, so one more example for two-dimensional kinematics. This one's a little bit more challenging. This one has a couple of students that are playing some volleyball. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the picture for us because I think that's, it's helpful to see a picture. So they're playing volleyball. One student is on the far side and is gonna hit the volleyball up. It says she can hit the ball with a velocity of 15 meters a second at an angle of 30 degrees. So there we go. There's our 15 meters per second. Notice that that is the initial instantaneous velocity, right? And then we got a measure of 30 degrees there. All right. And the initial height is 1.5 meters. So we can add that in as well. So we'll just say this is 1.5 meters. Lots of good information here. The cord is 18 meters long. So this whole thing is 18 meters. And then the net, which is right in the middle, is 2.4 meters high. Assuming that Kira always serves straight, does Sujin need to be ready to receive the serve or can she rest easy? All right, so the real question is here is why would Sujin not need to be ready? What could happen wrong? Right? So first of all, the question is, does the ball go over the net? Because if the ball doesn't go over the net, then Sujin's good. She doesn't have to do anything. The second question is, okay, let's just say that the ball does go over the net. Is it going to land in bounds? Because if it ends up landing out of bounds, then it doesn't matter. So we got two things to look at here, right? Does it go over the net? And does it go out of bounds? So let's go ahead and have a look at those two things. First, we're going to look at the net. All right, does it go over the net? Now, in order to do this, we're gonna have to take that initial velocity because here's the problem. Remember, we, we like to write out our table. We like to do, this is obviously two-dimensional, so we've got horizontal and vertical. We have our initial position, final position, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time that we're working with. Recognize that, yes, my initial, let's see, let's go ahead and, let's, let's go ahead and start here. So my initial horizontal position, we can label this as being zero. So we're going to put that as zero. The final position, if we're looking at does it go over the net, is halfway across the court, which is going to be nine meters. Okay, we're just looking horizontally here. Now, it does ask us for the initial velocity. This has to be the initial horizontal velocity, right? And so we can't use that 15 meters a second. The 15 meters a second is up in this direction. So what we want to do is we want to take that 15 and that angle of 30, and we want to break it up into horizontal and vertical components. So the horizontal and vertical there, recognize that the horizontal is right here adjacent to the 30, whereas the vertical is opposite the 30. Now you can use uh, trig, sine, cosine, tangent for that if you want. I'm recognizing this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So opposite the 30 is half of the hypotenuse, so 7.5. And then this right here would be 7.5 times the square root of three. All right, you can punch that in your calculator if you want. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get a decimal for that 7.5 7 root three. And I got 12.99. So I'm just going to go ahead and round that up. Even with two significant figures, that's going to be 13. So I'm going to use 13, and that is meters per second. That is, that's this guy right here. So it was 12.99. So close enough to 13, we'll use that. The final velocity, that's the velocity when it gets to the net. We don't know that. So we'll leave that blank for now. The acceleration, well, this is horizontal. Horizontal, there should be no acceleration, which means we do know the horizontal velocity. It's still going to be 13, right? This horizontal velocity should be the same all the way across because there's nothing horizontally. Remember, we're assuming ignoring air resistance, so that should all be zero. Time now, we can actually solve for. We can use our kinematics equation, x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. And we know the final position. The final position was 9. We know the initial position, which was 0. We know the initial velocity, which was 13. And acceleration does not matter because it's 0 acceleration. So that guy's going to go to 0. And so we can just do 9 divided by 13. And we get our final answer, which is that time equals 0 0.692 
seconds. All right, so we now have time, which is great. It tells us that's how long it takes to get there. But the real question is, does it make it over the net or not? And you may say, well, that was worthless. Why do we use all the horizontal information if we need to go up the vertical? Well, watch this. So we're going to start with y. We're going to look at our vertical now. So that's going to be 1.5 meters, right? Because it starts at 1.5. We're not going to put a number here. It's tempting to put the 2.4 there. But we actually don't want that, right? We wanna find out how high is it, not when is it 2.4 meters high. So we're gonna actually find out how tall it is. That's what we're looking for there. We do have an initial vertical velocity, which was 7.5. We don't have a final, okay? We're not worried about that. We don't know that it's at its peak at the net. It could have peaked already or it could peak later. So we don't actually know the final velocity there. Our acceleration, of course, is negative 9.8. And now we're going to use that 0 0.692 that we had before as our time. Now, looking at our equations, you can probably decide which one you want to use. Go ahead. Which one do you think we want to use? If you said this baby, then you're right. Congratulations. We don't want something that has that final velocity in it. So any other equation, which is just this one, is exactly what we want. So we're going to go ahead and put our numbers in there. We're looking for that height. What height is it when we're at 0 0.692 seconds? That's the real question. Is it going to be high enough to make it over the net? So what's that height? Starting at 1.5, our initial velocity was 7.5 times 0.692, add on that 1 half times negative 9.8 times that t squared, which again is that 0.692 squared. We plug all that in, beep, 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 and we get a value of 4.34 meters. All right, so does it make it over the net? Absolutely. Yes, it does. Now, we probably get a pretty good feeling from this that it's probably going out of bounds, but we should double check. We should just double check and make sure that we can figure out where is it going to land. All right. So at this point, we are going to try to find out when it hits the ground over here. So we are going to actually need a new table here, right? We're going to go ahead and write out the whole table this time. And hopefully, we'll be able to figure this out without too much math. Okay, so this time we're starting where she is, and then we're going to end all the way over, you know, when it hits the ground. So a lot of these things are the same. Initially, my initial horizontal position is zero. My final horizontal position, we don't know that, right? That's what we're actually looking for. That's what we're hoping to get. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that X in there to remind us that's what we're looking for. How far does the ball go? Okay, the initial velocity, well, the initial horizontal we already know is 13. The final horizontal is also 13. The acceleration is zero horizontally. And the time, we're actually going to need to find that. Okay, now how much time will it take? Well, let's look at the vertical, right? The vertical starts 1.5 meters up in the air. And we want it to end down at the ground. So we want our final to be zero. All right, you could have made zero for the initial and negative 1.5 for your final vertical displacement, and that's fine as well. We've got our initial velocity here. The initial velocity in the y direction was 7.5. We don't know what it is when it hits the ground, so we're going to leave that alone. And the vertical acceleration, of course, is negative 9.8. That's enough information that we can solve for time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to set up an equation that allows us to solve for time. Then we're going to use that time to help us find the position to determine whether the ball is going to land inbounds or out of bounds. All right. I want to challenge you to pause the video right now to try to figure out the right equations, to try to figure out how to put those in and to get the answers. I'm going to just pop everything up right now because I think the last algebra part here we don't need to spend lots of time on. Now you've got the setup. Go ahead, pause the video, and see what you can get. All right, so what you can see here is that I first used the vertical information. All right, with the vertical information, 
I decided I wanted to use this equation because remember, I do not have final velocity for y there. I don't know how fast it's going vertically as it hits the ground. So I'm gonna use this equation, the only one that doesn't have that final velocity into it. I plug the numbers in, I get a quadratic. Your calculator, if you have a graphing calculator, it will likely solve that for you. You can either graph it and find the x-intercepts or you can use the polynomial solver. Ask your teacher uh, or, or look it up here on YouTube if you need to figure out how your calculator will calculate that for you. You don't wanna have to mess with factoring a quadratic formula. I'm sure you're amazing at your algebra skills, but don't waste your time on that. Let the calculator do the math for you. And I ended up getting two answers. One of them was negative, so I didn't write it down. The other answer is that time equals 1.71. So that's the time that I used. That, of course, carries over to the horizontal. Now I can find out at which point the ball is going to land. And so I put that into the horizontal. Again, I decided to use this same formula because I needed position and I I didn't want to use the one with the v squared equals v naught squared because that multiplies the acceleration, which is zero times the distance. And so that wouldn't have been helpful. So I decided to use this one. It's simplified because my initial position and my acceleration are both zero to x equals v naught t. I put in those two numbers, remember using the time that we just got from the vertical, and I calculated a distance of 22.23 meters. So the final answer to the question and the justification is, yes, she can rest easy. Sujin doesn't need to worry because even though the ball will go over the net, the ball is going to land out of bounds, 22.23 meters away, instead of landing within that 18 meters. All right, so that's it. Um, and I hope that was helpful in answering that question.